I don't know how rideable that is for me. I'm like, I mean, over my head. <laughs> Something I should probably let you know right out of the gate is that I'm scared of the dark truly and definitely scared. Specifically scared of being alone in the woods, in the dark. It's something I kind of assumed I would just one day grow out of, but as a fully grown adult who now has kids, I can definitely say it has not just gone away. In this adventure, I wanna tackle this fear head on. And I'm gonna take you with me as I try to do my first ever solo overnight camping trip with a bunch of borrowed bags that I'm gonna to strap to my bike with my camping gear and go find a place to camp in the woods through the night alone. Do you wanna hold the light for me? Thank you. Oh, don't grab the greasy chain. <laughs> I'm great at convincing myself that there'll always be a better time in the future to do it. This is one of those moments where I'm done with making excuses for myself. So we're gonna leave from my backyard to the mountains that I learned how to mountain bike on. Wah! A little nose touch to say goodbye. <laughs> do I look like I that's have all, everything? That's all you bring in? <laughs> Sleeping bag, tarp and stuff. Yeah. Bear spray down here. I've got root camera equipment on the back. Are you a little scared? Spend the night all by yourself <laughs> on a mountain? <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a little nervous, but uh, that's kind of fun. Goodbye. Thanks for helping me pack. <laughs> and we're off. The route I'm planning on biking is a twist on a trip that I already do multiple times a week but usually it's just a 15 or so minute drive and that's what takes me to the local mountains where I love to ride my mountain bike. But on this trip, instead of driving there like I normally do, I'm gonna pedal on my bike 100 or so kilometers around the perimeter of my hometown. So that way when I actually go mountain biking, I'll have gotten there under my own power. I'm excited to share also that I'm partnering with the Priceless Planet Coalition in this video. It's an initiative started by MasterCard to help take meaningful action towards looking after our planet. They challenged me to share a story on what I find priceless about our planet. And I thought, what better way to do that than by heading out into nature in my own backyard. Okay, stop here for a quick breather. Uh, we just came up the hill that way. We're on Chuak Mountain currently. Basically any direction here in the upper Fraser Valley, you can just explore endlessly. And the mountain we're coming up around now, this is Chuak Mountain. And this is essentially the backyard of where I grew up. So I grew up on the other side of Chuak Mountain. And so coming by here is always, uh, always fills me with some nostalgia. This is the mighty Fraser River of BC. So the ocean is just about an hour that way on the water if we were on a boat. We've got some hours of pedaling ahead of me. So far the bike's actually working pretty well. It's, I can tell it's heavier, but it's pedaling well. 
But my goal is if I can make bike packing trips work on this setup, then that means I can get to a mountain and actually do some mountain biking on the mountain, some trail riding, which is my favorite thing to do. And then that makes the whole journey there actually be like worth it. I can definitely be a classic overthinker when it comes to doing things that I've always wanted to do. So to be out here actually pedaling my bike and in the process of doing this trip feels honestly really great. In almost all the stereotypical ways that you may expect, becoming a father has certainly given me a fresh perspective on this pursuit of adventure. And I know it seems cliche to say this, but raising kids truly is a great adventure and all that. Like it truly, really is. And more than that though, it's changing the lens through which I kind of see the future and how I think about what's, what's coming next in life and what to look forward to. And not only just looking forward to my own future adventures, but I now find myself getting really excited for my kids to grow up and get to explore and experience some of the same places that I've loved growing up. coming to realize this in a deeper way than I ever have before, but a big part of actually seeing that come to fruition of my kids getting to taste and experience some of the same things that I really value is actually taking action to protect the spaces that I've come to really value. I mean, come on. That there's the mountain we're going up. Let's go get it. I'm not going to claim to know all the answers here, but certainly when my kids grow up and they ask me why I didn't start making videos on some of these topics earlier and maybe why I didn't take more action, I definitely want a better answer for them than the one that I can give now. And I'm really starting to believe that small local action to care for our spaces is really important. And I think doing that also helps me anchor and prioritize the larger initiatives we can support for caring for the planet. Normally I just drive the car right up to this spot here, get out, unload, and then my ride starts. But now I've already put in a decent amount of work just to get here. I'm loaded up and uh, we haven't even started the mountain biking yet. And here we go. Finding my way through single track in the forest is one of my favorite things to do. With ferns all around you on the ground floor and massive trees towering up above you. As I continue to climb my way through the mountain here, this is a great time to tell you more about the Priceless Planet Coalition. I've personally been using MasterCard for over five years and I had no idea some of these great initiatives that they had up. A big one that I'm excited about is that they've gathered partners from all over the world to help plant a hundred million trees by the year 2025. And that is, that's kind of just like an insurmountable number that's hard to have perspective on. My brother and my sister were tree planters and they go up north in BC and planted like, I think the records were maybe thousands of trees in a day. And to think of a hundred million trees, that number is just kind of mind bending to me. But I appreciate that MasterCard is working with already established organizations and just trusting their experience on the ground for the best places to reforest, for fragile ecosystems, and more trees in the world. That is, uh, that is definitely a good thing. They've got all these various layers of things that they're trying to incorporate into who they are as a company to do action, to do help for the planet. Uh, definitely some links to check out down in the description if you wanna know more about what MasterCard is doing. And I'm grateful that they're partnering with me in this video as I get out into my own backyard and try to explore and share about what I value about this space 
and how badly I want to protect it so that way we can keep playing out here in the outdoors. Something that I just, I love so much. Nick has been leapfrogging around Chilliwack with me today, helping me film a couple different sections so I didn't have to worry about it as much. And uh, he's officially going home. See you, dude. Have a fun hike down. Thanks, buddy. See you later. Okay, things are getting a little bit steeper. Oof. Almost ate it. I'm feeling pretty spent. This is, maybe I was a little optimistic about how, how strong my legs were going into this. Okay. <laughs> there it is, right up there. There's something called Ruby's Knoll. And that's where I think I'm going to camp tonight. Oh. <sighs> yeah. Oh, that feels good. Oh, that feels so good. Wow, look at that. This morning I got a weather warning that said severe rain coming tomorrow morning. So I, I don't think my sleep tonight is gonna go very well as it's gonna start raining a lot. And I think the ride out tomorrow is gonna be pretty dicey spicy. By the time I get back here, it's gonna be pitch black. Hopefully this will provide a wide enough beam for trail riding. Now this guy here, down into the abyss. I don't know how rideable that is for me. Man, you know, there's a part of me inside that really wants to give it a go. I really want to give it a... commit zone here is pretty early. There's not tons of options to back out. Just give them to me. Okay, I'll be back soon. Up till now, it hasn't really settled in that I will be alone up here in the woods tonight, but uh, I'm certainly trying to keep myself preoccupied before I let myself start to worry about it too much. And some background here, today actually isn't the first time that I've attempted to sleep alone in the woods. Uh, my last attempt was around four years ago. I ended up bailing on it at around 2 a.m. in the morning uh, after seeing some raccoon eyes in the woods that spooked me out. Uh, and I ran back to the cabin and spent the night in the cabin instead. So what I'm doing here in this experience is something that I haven't done before. And it is scary for me. I'm trying to just remind myself that the fear is okay to feel. Um, but just by feeling it, that doesn't mean it needs to define or limit what I value as being important to experience. <laughs> it's so dark. <sighs> Gonna lose the last little bit of light here soon. Let's bike back down to camp. Let's do it. Yee hoo! Woo hoo hoo hoo! Yee hoo! Whew. Riding my bike through the dark here is uh, definitely giving me ample opportunity to reflect on my life's choices. Maybe I want some water.
this is kind of what the setup is looking like. I think it's going to be a really, really wet night and I'm going to wonder why I picked doing it today. How am I doing fear level wise? I was doing like pretty good. Like not even really noticing it. It just felt like normal camping. And then I heard a branch break over somewhere and my, my just like fight or flight just went off heart just racing I grabbed my light and I'm just like pointing it into the woods and of course like of course I don't see anything like maybe I would see a squirrel like I don't even know <laughs> I don't know what I would see but uh yeah I'm just standing there staring so that wasn't very fun but that moment has sort of passed and uh I'm gonna go to bed now so I'm gonna zip myself up and call it a day so good night I slept last night, like I actually got in some good chunks of long sleep. I, uh, my, my hamstrings and my quads feel super tight this morning. Oh my God. I'm not gonna ride any aggressive trails on the way down. Just keep it nice and mellow. Man, doing drops and jumps was so weird. I tried to avoid a thorn bush right in the center of the trail. Biking this morning, it definitely isn't my favorite thing to be completely soaked through with rain, but I'm certainly just grateful for the experience of actually doing it. I made it through the night. And throughout this bike trip and making a video about this experience, I've definitely been thinking about more practical ways to start including conversations about the climate crisis alongside adventures that I care about. And obviously what I value most is the actions that I continue to take when the cameras are off. But I also feel like finding ways to talk about this stuff in videos is also really important to me and finding ways to leverage my channel to, to try to do good things with it. And I love big initiatives. I love what the Priceless Planet Coalition is doing with planting so many trees on a global scale. But also, along with supporting larger initiatives, I think it's really important to get connected and support local level initiatives to help you stay grounded. So by protecting and valuing your own backyard spaces, it'll help you realize that other people's backyards are also worth valuing and protecting. And so I think both hand in hand is really important. I'm gonna call my friend Mark. And Mark went on to start the Chilliwack Park Society in his spare time to support local trails, to gather volunteers, and to look after our backyard and, and the place that I, I love playing in. He started an organization that looks after them, builds some incredible trails, places that I love to ride. And uh, I just really like what Mark's done with the Chilliwack Park Society. Hello. Good morning. I was also just like reflecting like these trails that I just went up and, and bike camped for the first time. Like the first time that I ever went mountain biking was, well, I, how old would I? I was very young. 12, 11 or 12? 11 or 12. Here, yeah. And my first rides, you took me out on my first rides. That was pretty fun. And something that I've always wanted to do is to like use revenue from my channel to like support organizations that I think are cool. And so you can probably guess where this is going. Uh, yeah. I'd love to have all the, the ad rev from this specific video. So hopefully my audience helps it do well. I want to donate all of that to Chilliwack Park Society. Oh, sweet. That might not be that big of a number. <laughs> So I wanted to like just do a base donation of two thousand dollars as well to like oh, send it home. That's already a big number. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. Wow. Really? Yeah. Totally. That's good timing. We're tight for cash, and I just bought a bunch of tools that I'm not sure how we're gonna pay for. So it's sweet. <laughs> I gotta get in some more trail days this fall for sure. I gotta show up to some of the crew build days more. You being someone who builds trails, is there anything that you wish that the common trail user knew? Uh, the main thing is like stop complaining about stuff. I mean the same in your YouTube comments, right? Like everyone's got an opinion of the keyboard. Like Frick, come on and help. Okay, see you Mark, I gotta ride home in the rain. Okay, good chat. Stay dry, man.
Yeah. We've got a long bike home in the rain. Let's uh, let's start. Well, that uh, coffee refuel was one of the better tasting coffees I've had in a long time. And the scone and the almaretto and the cookie to go. <laughs> I, just, I just got some, some calories. This is gonna hopefully help me trug through here. At this point from where we are in town, if I was driving, I could be home in 12 minutes. That's, that's, that's how long it would take. And if I'm being honest with you, I've had to resist the temptation to call my wife and ask her to pick up my backpack so that way I no longer have to carry it on my back to have her bring me some fresh shoes and some warm clothes because it is now full on raining. This is the 50, 60 millimeters they're talking about. I'm certainly gonna have a new appreciation every time I ride those mountain bike trails knowing how long and how much of an effort it is to get all the way over there on my own power. We've definitely settled into that headspace of just wanting to get home. I must admit that even on my ride home here, completely soaked, I'm surprised that it seems like this new area of my brain is sort of unlocked and I'm already daydreaming and thinking to myself about all sorts of other local adventures that I want to do, especially adventures that weren't possible without camping with other people. But now that I'm more willing to do solo camping, it's kind of got me excited about a lot of future possibilities. And that's just, that's a really encouraging note for me to finish off on. Let's go, suffer fast. <laughs> Next stop, we're home. Woo! <laughs> Hey, uh, it's now a month plus from when I recorded that video. Um, and we've had some extreme weather events in the past several days. And I'm actually currently stranded from my home. Uh, this is some video clips from TikTok and other sources, some clips from friends of what is currently going on in Southern BC and the province in general. Uh, we've had record breaking rainfalls uh, in the amounts that just the province is not, I mean, it, it, it's known as the rainy province. We have so much rain here in the fall, uh, but the perfect sequence of events has caused a lot of havoc and damage. Uh, right now, all the roads, which in the last, in my entire lifetime being born in BC, I've never heard of this happening where the only when it snows are like people cut off for a little bit of time, but you don't panic that much. But, uh, yeah, there's helicopters flying like crazy overhead in between uh, uh, West Fraser Valley and East Fraser Valley today because it's completely shut off from road access. And it's going to be most likely days. And there's been whispers about maybe weeks uh, until it gets sorted out. Um, it's a comp it's a complicated sequence of events of, of what causes some, some of that. But the it just seems pertinent to like address and acknowledge it within the conversation of extreme weather events and the climate crisis and just thinking about things that we can do to invest in looking after our spaces better and also just reflecting on the ways that we've changed our environment around us in ways that uh, maybe maybe nature is balancing back out in certain ways certainly my biggest concern is people who've been losing their homes and people who are at risk and people uh, that is all devastating and also it does make you wonder at least where I live, the areas that I was biking all through, a lot of those are now flooded on either side completely. Like the landscape that you saw in this video now looks different.
it's complicated, so I don't want to oversimplify it, um, but certainly a lot of the forest fires that happened, uh, the rains that will now happen, where that those forests used to be, the mudslides are going to be more likely. Um, that is just a, a, a kind of a thing, and whole towns right now are underwater because they're just not prepared for the quantity of water. And again, just to like remind you, this is a province that gets insane amount of water every fall, and to see communities up and down BC just crippling right now under the water load is just kind of shocking and like our main highways are just like washing away and it's just like what is going on so I don't necessarily have answers or anything or any reflections but it's just interesting to me that a lot of the terrain that you're seeing me bike through in this video is now flooded on either side will will be okay to my understanding our home specifically isn't at risk currently um uh, but certainly there's a lot of friends and family that are that are evacuating have evacuated their places are now filled with water that is wild the, the climate crisis and extreme weather events is not waiting for anyone it is here and it's affecting us and wow 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 anyhow thanks for listening to this update here hopefully i can get back to my kids and my wife soon um and thanks for listening to this update uh yep it's just interesting interesting times thanks and uh see you soon remember life's better when you make stuff peace